Cachanach Cadain, I a g, ne gunnel cheese, connach away, no way a atlain connachu e a day a ya. Has shookish good the ye gunnel cheese. Uh, so a couple of things like thinking of this translation work. Um, I did put some phrases in here that probably aren't great for translation. Like I should have said, they are my friend, but they don't work hard. Maybe that would be better than I like them because it's such an English kind of concept. Um, but if you wanted to say, I want them or like them, they do technically become a subject. So you can have a subject in here, which is a subject pronoun, but they're not the ones doing it. For example, I like you, which could also mean I want you. So be careful. But in the right context, it's not it's an alright thing to say. You would say ach tu wach isigu. So that was how you would so you end up usually with tu wach. And then in this case you would have isigu. And then if you're trying to translate that, I want you to want me, uh, So that's a case where you have a subject pronoun, which is actually the thing being desired or wanted. So it's a bit strange. Uh, I would, Could you back up and explain that X at the end of tuwa? Yeah, so if if there's something that if there's if you're going to activate or put something in there ah. then it just it pops up so you can have kind of a clear separation. Because ah. this, this can go away if the noun ends with it, it seems to be long vowels like ah we were there. Uh and so there are cases where you don't have to put it on there. A ka ye ye ti. So, and that there's some cases where, like, because it's probably tu ya, and then it becomes tu wa, and then it becomes tu wa. But, you know, it, it also violates some of the rules because it's like a special, you know, it does seem to be like inside face or inside vertical surface, but then you get, but that's just because there's a i. Right there, so it it could it be too ah tu wa isiku. There's a little bit you got to make kind of a hard stop there because slingit does not allow you to run the vowels together. Like Hawaiians, like smush them, go for it, and the vowels just run right into each other. But in slingit, they can't do that, and so in this case, uh, and same with if that was hus, like I I like them, ah tu wa hus siku. So it's mostly just for the sound separation. It doesn't have any independent meaning, like yeah, no. Okay, like the, the ah and the are kind of interchangeable. In okay, finish cheese. For I work hard. I would probably go uh, just jichane. That's you know, like on a regular basis, and and there are some act verbs where the imperfective can be interpreted as like. I, that's what just what I do, and so um, and they're just lazy. That's probably a high tone. You guys are great translators. Oh no, it's low. Uh, oh yeah. So uh, is for, that would be the plural for yes, for laying around. Uh, let's see, the ayin part, is that like during a length of time or something? Yeah. So you could probably say chatuk and then chatuk and then uh, we had looked at this relaxing verb and then there is for a single person uh, to lay around, so yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, what is that? A ton? A 
let's go find it. Let's go find line around. Because we do have some options for some of these. And then in terms of like how would we say a similar thing in Tlingit, which we were I was in the nest today for the first time and that was really fun. Uh, so we're going to check lie and see what we find. So we have, uh, and as we look at all of these verbs for something to be lying there, uh, we see a lot of them closing, right? So this is the achjit. This is the same verb, achjit. T is you get t at teen. So they tend to want to close the open vowels with some of these. When they lie around, they close the vowels. I don't know why. Uh, but same here, sateen, right? And so this would be achit sate. Hand me the complex object. Uh, same thing, achit kate. Kut, 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 kateen. And then kasate. Uh, so this small sick-like object, kuhi dadnadauk kat kasatin, kat tan, satan. This is where klach satanjin, that name comes from, for the mountain. Katan kasatan, katla'a diach. Now we get a singular subject, shistan. So now we can go see if we can find it in the verb database because that might show us a habitual, which would be really effective right here for they're always laying around. And we're not trying to shame anybody for lay, laying around. Do your thing. Uh, let's see. So we're we're definitely shaming them. <laughs> Come on. Okay, lights, a sprinkle of shame, just a sprinkle. So we're going to go look up ta. So this is, there is a verb, you know, the verb to sleep should be in there. And we should, we're looking at, I'll show you guys this fish. We're, we're doing fun stuff in the nest today. It was really fun. Uh, okay, we look for ta. Let's change how you did the she, how you got on good day. Ah, okay. Okay, so here we have to be lying down uh, at N. So in this case, you could put at in front of it if you want to. Um, but yeah, so you, I don't think you get anything other than an imperfective because it's a position verb. So in this case, I would have to check because if it's a singular person, I would probably say chakak shistan. But I don't know if that would work. That's one I'd have to. I'd want to test because there might be. It might switch to a different verb because this is a position verb. Really, only works for is or isn't right now. So this is the case where you'd probably end up with this going down to making themselves comfortable. And then you might have to separate this into a whole other thing. So, so you could say, and then you would grab this one. Um, we are working, whenever we're working, they're always lying around. They're always making themselves comfortable. So there, there's different ways you can go about it. And so you, it could be a thing where, like, you could do that in a short sentence in English, but for Tlingit, you might need a couple of different things. How come, in this case, you don't use the, um, the uh, <clears throat> singular form of plural and just say um, they are they are comfortable the same way you would say he is comfortable. Uh, I mean, in like coming back to like here, like this they right there. Yes. So you could say like she or he. 
So I'm trying to move towards using they for a singular and they all for a plural. That's all. So in this case, it's not not doable that way? Oh, it is. Yeah. So you could say, um, uh, like this could be, you could put a, a gender in there if you wanted to, like, and then that uh, it's a singular, and you could put a he in there, and that's a singular. Uh, we used to, we were doing this for a while, uh, but then you can also do that for, and that I would consider that a singular, and then I would consider that a plural. But in this case, the verb is singular form, so so you don't say has um uh s h da 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 yeah so shit so has shit at is um would go to that's a plural form of the same verb which would be shistan they're they're laying they're lying there and you do so has shistan is good well that you can't have a has with Shistan, because that's got a, it's sort of like ta. You know, we want to tell one kid to go to bed, nata. We want to tell two kids to go to bed, naicheu. So it has to, there's a bunch of them that there's a singular and a plural form. This will be my last question on my deathbed before I die, too. I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Please, just tell me why. <laughs> That's because. Could we, could we use nooch as well with the lying around? They're always lying around. I think, so I think you could say, but again, I'd have to check that because okay. it's a position verb. Um, um, is there some other way like you because you might end up sort of as we go back into that verb as well um if we go back up to the ta verb if it's a position verb it's like you're playing statue mm -hmm. get in that position and you're just because it, it literally means like you're laying yourself there Right, because and that's why it has the sh in front of it. So you have shistan, shastan. I'm I'm laying here, because we do have, like, so we know nata, right, and then you have nasta. You know, like so, like let's say um, you're trying to you're a grandparent, then you have a so you have a kid who has a kid. And you're trying to coach them up, or maybe you're just telling them like it's time for that kid to go to bed. Nasta, put them to bed. So nata is go to sleep. Nasta is put them to sleep. Put them to bed. And then this is it's the same verb root. It's got them kind of, I think listed out as two, but I think they're the same. And so this one is to lay yourself down. But then it's a position verb, so you end up with, um, so you might, so here's the motion verb, so maybe it goes to this one. Um, so you could say, that's it. So they always, they always just lie down. And then since they do it to themselves, can you please explain what happens to the classifier? I'm still learning about the plus D minus I situation. So a plus D, yeah, so a, so you have Z, but anytime Z, if you take the I out of there, you end up with just an S. And it's the same case with, with gl and with J. So you would have in any future or negative of that, you would have just the S or just the L 
or just the H. So you'd say Klesh Stud. Wait, so you'd say At At Stutle Tu. Or you'd say, no, Klingit Stutle Tu. Wait, hold on. What am I trying to do? So let's go find out. So. Sorry for the other rabbit hole, but I'm like thinking about what to do in my mind when I need to use that. So with the the two verb, right? So here's another one. To teach someone, that's an L classifier. It is an L classifier, right? So you, you should be saying, um, do ich uh, tu. I'm teaching it to them. Uh, but you would have, you say, ye away ha i would do tu. That's how it was taught to us. Right? And then, like Cyril used to say that. But if people didn't teach it to us, the at also goes away. I think I'm using the, the wrong one here. So, so here's the perfective, right? So this is, for example, I would say, I could say, Hastu ich I taught it to them. Then I could say, Ach ich wududli tu. It was taught to me. Now, fourth person pushes it plus D. But you would say, Klesh ach ich wududli tu. So that would just switch back to the, that's just the L. So like a plus D and a minus I just like eliminates the D and the I? Well, if it's plus D, the minus I version is only the letter L. Okay. If it's, oh yeah, plus D, the minus I version is only the letter L. And, and same with this. So when we go back to this verb, um, where are we at? Ta. Oh, we're going up to to lying down right so you lay yourself down you put yourself to bed is basically what you're doing and so uh like if you're teaching your dog some tricks lay down, right? lay down. So, oh go ahead oh uh, sorry i'm i'm old enough that i was taught you have to say lie down not lay down, but I, so I'm getting <laughs> palpitations when I hear it the other way, but I know this verb is in transition and that everybody's saying lay down now. So I'm just trying to get over it. Uh, uh, lie down, lie down. <laughs> <laughs> Leg <laughs> <laughs> <Like> grammar. <laughs> so you do have here you have yun shwadzita, but it will only be plus i in the perfective and in the potential. Everything else should be minus i, so only the letter s. So we get yun shista, klish yach shista yik, and then you have klish yun wusta, and then all so everything else is just the letter s, and then for the perfective habitual, the habitual is also minus i. Okay, so it'd be yun shwasta and kesh wusta. Or yun shwadzata and kesh wusta. Ah. And then uh yeah, they just lay they just lay themselves down. If they just lie themselves down, dang it. Lay themselves down. I, now I lay me down to sleep. 
I, I put myself down. So it is a put, you know, in that in that sense. Yeah, okay. Oh, people are gonna kill me on YouTube for laying and lying. I'm lying about the laying. Am I laying about the lying? <laughs> okay. Uh, so this was right. So the negative of the of the habitual is hasn't done it yet, hasn't happened yet. So there's, you know, that's one that has this logical thing that I always thought was interesting, because I used to think that that would naturally be, they don't always do it, right? Uh, so chochaych would be I, I eat it every time, but then kesh chochaych would be haven't eaten it yet. So now we're going to get the code for like before the thing happened. So in this case, we're going to go look for this city verb. So the, the phrase we're looking for is before I became a teacher. So we're going to go to look up the verb city, which is here to be. Scroll down, and it's down here for be or become. What we are going to look for is the habitual form of this. And uh, there is a perfective habitual for this one. I, I've heard it. Um, you should must teach. Um, not teach. Yeah, so not teach would be to be. Uh, Nas teach would be it becomes that every time. So, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take this. So this is uh, not the best example. Um, and we're going to copy this, this Unas teach. And it is going to go through a couple of changes. So we'll go back to here. And I'm going to say, I don't think you need that. And then you're going to have khat. Okay. What I want to do here. Oh, so right, we're going to back up right before we hit the verb itself. And we're going to put ch and then the, the contracted L. And then we're going to change, we're going to put the I on the end of this, which is going to change it to a J. So you should have So this is what you get for before that thing had happened or before it became that way. And the way that I first heard this verb uh, was in the same verb root, but a different verb. So we're going to go find to exist. And so we're going to go down here and we get us teach. It exists every time. And then I had, um, I'm going to put it down here. So we have this us teach. Then we have the letter L, that suffix which changes the CH to a J. Wait, you gotta change your screen. Oh, whoops, sorry. So now we get before they were born. And then you can also have, so this would be before they were born. And then you can also have if that changes. So if I want to change that to ha, right? It goes from a zero subject, the third person, to ha. Before 
I was born. Casa Ank Yakucha Uwan. Oh, yeah, okay. And then I'd probably go that Kuchwa Uwan. I lived there. I used to live there, but not now. So, Renee, would it be wrong to use uh, shukut or shukut, or is it just a different way of saying it? I, I think for the shukut, I usually hear that for like, um, you you got there before me. So it's like, ach shukut, uh, ach shukut at igut, or ach, ach shukut at igut, you got there before me. Or Akshukat Hat Iagut, you got here before me. Ishukat Hat Chakut, I got here before you. So I hear the Shukat being used more for like um, sequencing two people sort of doing the same sort of thing. Uh, but it might be something interesting if you're saying like, before you do this thing, you have to do that other thing. And then that moves it into this other particle, which is s -e, which in the or like sa, I think is another one. Okay, well, ah. Would and, you use that shukat if you were talking about somebody who figured out a problem before, before me? Yeah, you could say ah shukat yidlak. You got it before before me. Mm. Okay. I'm having a little bit of a hard time with the um, before they were born. Taking the is it the perfective habitual that you're yes. modifying? Because oh, go ahead. It just seems like habitual every time. It's just like. That doesn't seem to go. Before you were born is not a habitual thing. So the negative of it in Tlingit, so just in the way that Tlingit logic works. Okay. Is the habitual, like, mm. I eat it every, I always eat it. Mm -hmm. right? Like every day I'm eating something, right? But the negative form isn't, doesn't have to do with really like an opposite of that. It means oh. I haven't eaten it yet. So that's that's the first step is like the uh -huh. negative habitual actually means hasn't happened yet. Okay. Right? So I haven't talked yet. I haven't whatever. So you're, t you're signaling two things. Mm. Haven't, but it's going to happen. Mm. It sort of makes sense to me because it's sort of like um, always up until now, it it never happened. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. That helps. Ganesh Chish. So then when you put ch in front of it, that contracts the clash to just the letter L. Ch mm -hmm. And then you put a suffix on there to sort of kind of locate it in, it's like a bit of a time marker. Mm. And you could use any sort of habitual and throw that suffix on there, and then you get before it happened. Okay. Gonna that, that L is a contraction for clef, huh? Yeah, just, uh, just like you'll oh. see it in shakushke, which is, it, it contracts there as well, to be with, without, to be without wisdom, to be foolish, <laughs> the way you're using lie. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying about the habitual there, Hune. So let me try to put it into words and maybe you can tell me if I'm the right, on the right track or not. We need the habitual because the speaker didn't just live in Kassan for a summer. The, the speaker was there for the duration. Yeah. Yeah, what? 
And, and the other thing is there seems to be a bit of a, a permanence to probably the way that you're using these ones too. So you wouldn't necessarily use this for like before I had dinner, right? I, I don't know if you would use it for something like that for just sort of because you we're getting into some of these bigger concepts too. like I became a teacher, I was born and I'd have to probably do a bit more work with some speakers to figure out some of these because this is really getting into the fine tuning weeds, you know. And I think I heard you say Unas Tiji. Ah. And so should that final I be high toned? That's a good question. Probably. And so should this one. Okay, so we're looking for crack. <laughs> the verb. So here, I'm gonna make this bigger. So we have for bones to be fractured. We have for someone to crack something on purpose. We have for something to be cracked. We have something to be cracked on the surface. Uh, we have for something to crack apart. Now I wonder I would expect Kaushakas, but I want to see. I'm going to do a search for canoe because I think I saw this in here. There's probably a bunch of canoe things in here. Here it is. You you passed on wood. Oh. For crack? Was it under crack? Well, there's, yeah. Okay, let me go back. Yeah, you, it, was, it was near the bottom. Crack of wood or a log or rock. Oh, okay. To crack apart into two pieces. Yeah, completely in two pieces. Oh. Yeah. Which, you know, Hopefully that happened to our boat. So yeah, this is splitting down the center. So I do think this is a bigger thing than we're thinking of. Like, um, I hope so. Yeah, like the canoe's going to be in big trouble. <laughs> the wooden canoe that sort of gets too dry and cracks. Landing place. Um, in Jeff Lear's notes, it has Uwa Kus is split or cracked, fractured in some way, but still holding together. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what we want. Yeah. Sheesh. Hmm. Okay. And is that in his verb notes? Yes, Millie gets the credit oh, for that. Nice. Let's see, add it to her grade. Jeez. Okay. She's Smarty Pants's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but also though, there's a verb, it says kawa, oh, inside surface of open vessel is cracked. Oh, sheesh. Which I don't, yeah. Oh, it, maybe it's a, it says dish, oh, uh, oh, dish is cracked by action, yeah. Okay.
commute. The A's are hard to find in here. See, I think that's a surface crack. So it, it kind of, I do think that one would work, but if we go back to the, and sometimes we're gonna do a little bit of back and forth, like what we, what we see in the verb dictionary and what we see in those notes. And then we get to, cracked on the surface. So Nik works yeah. for germs as well. It's pretty cool. We don't know how, how deep a crack it is, huh? Oh yeah, right. So I would that's a so this is a really good thing as well. Like I would imagine you could use you know, so you would the verb you would be using is uwa uh, for uh, like some kind of surface crack, but even that, so like there's a crack, but it doesn't go all the way through. And so we're probably thinking of something along these lines because it's, it's dry and that's the cracking that, that it caused that it results from being so here we would say kudach. I wish Herb Shakley was here because then he could tell us what you do to keep it from cracking. Moisturizer. <laughs> Yeah, moisturizer blanket for your canoe. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Amazon has some of those. Do we even really have that problem? Something being too dry? If yes. it's stored, yes. yes, if it's not stored, like especially those, we're learning a lot more about taking care of cedar canoes as we bring them back to use. Mm -hmm. So I would say, Kudach a hook. And just for fun, we'll go, oops, wrong one. We'll go look up the, see what kind of hook we got over here too. Okay, I don't know where I went. I lost it. Okay, wuk uh, Yeah, it might be ch. Uh, it might be ch. Uh. Like sometimes it's really hard to catch. Um, like I used to always say ch utleich, and I think it should be ch utleich. And then so whether some of them are ch uh, and some of them are ch. Uh. And they're so close together in meaning. Anyways, I think that's uh, one of those example sentences from uh, Nation Story. Oh yeah, hey. that uh, Eggleston uses. But it's always I always thought it was such a neat sentence that it. Uh, but I never could hook it up with what you were talking about tonight. But anyways, there you go. Sutant shakwatanuk. I'll get up. I'm going to get up before the raven is heard. Uh, last thing for today, we worked um, on stamping fish to like painting and stamping fish, which was pretty fun. And then I wanted to revisit this thing with the fish parts. Uh, and just sort of look at that. I added shanya. I try to get a little bit more nuchi. I didn't really know how to describe that. That's that soft flesh right between the jaw bones of a fish. That's called the nuchi. Uh, Khatsi is another, I think, important one. That's the skin of a fish or a frog. It's also the atmosphere. 
um, and then the tawu, which is feather or fin. Um, and so I just want us to sort of think about this, and then I'll share with you folks a list of phrases that we got today working with kakashat. Uh, this really fun stuff. So like uh, lemon juice, kashets uhu, klerk, kahini. Uh, this was named by George Davis. It's kashets uhu, klerk, uh, yao. And then you have body parts, which there's still some stuff to figure out. Like I still think if it's connected, you still would say a sha. But some people want to say sha yi if it's non-human. Uh, but when you attach something to sha, it does push that long and low. So a sha or a sha dach or a sha de, which is why you say ka shadahani and na shadehani. Sha de is what's in the middle of that. Uh, a kuwu. And then same thing, a kuwu de and a kuwu or a kuwu So if something ends with a vowel, you can have t underline x for from or dach. You get your choice. Uh, uh, Bates was an interesting one. Atyanak uh, is bait. And if you're talking about bait, for it, you could say ayinaku. So here's something that I probably have to explore a little bit more. I seem to remember George talking about using something for bait. And I think he said, oh, I know where it is. Uh, it's in the word of the week stuff, which I have to somehow figure out how to finish it. Um, So I was trying to open it. I think I lost it. Oh, there it is. Let me see if it's in here real quick. I was sitting there today and I remembered hearing this. So here you have, I spell it wrong. So is um, bait. Ah, I knew it. I knew I'd heard that term before. Okay. We'll wrap up, but I'll just show you a couple more because there are cool phrases today. Only one A in that yana yeah yana yana That's Should my it's my mistake, yeah. Okay. So at yanak or a yanaku. Because the word nak is bait. To bait a hook. So you could say, uh, so we've got it down way down here. So what I was trying to do. Uh, so you could say, Yachtinak, I baited hooks. So everything that I was hearing in the nest today, and, and we weren't working with the kids, we were working with an elder. I tried to put the verb into his, I put it into um, usually a command, and then I'm going to, you're going to, they're going to, I am, you are, they are, I did, you did, they did. Um, so for a fish or something to be slimy, it's shechitli. Is an chit is slime, and a chitli would be its slime. But then we get the L classifier, which is it has slime. So shechitli. That's different than like for something to be slippery or slimy on the surface, like a rock or something. And then we have uh, an L classifier in washing. Anybody know why? Causative. Well, just to usually because you'd say like ijinna ooze, or you could say wasikana ooze. So usually you're getting a zero classifier for the washing. But when they were washing this fish, like I caught, you know, I caught that the L classifier was there, and it's it's a category thing. So if you're washing meat or feet, it's an L classifier. 
So you can also say uh, I'm going to wash my feet. Technically, I don't know why feet are considered. It's a very meaty thing to wash your feeties, I guess. I don't know. And, and meat in this case includes fish. Yes. Okay. Even though it has a different word for it, the flesh of it. But they were washing the outside. They were getting the slime off of it. And yeah, she was using the the L classifier. So then you get um, a variety of, I'll put this up so you folks can uh, look at it and we'll probably talk about it a little bit more on Wednesday. Then we were getting this Kaye day, which was really interesting because she was saying like, go in one direction so you're not brushing the scales off while you're wiping it. And it was really interesting. Uh, to paint is something else I think I think because it's a two syllable root that sometimes causes a little bit of confusion. So naniguet would be paint it and then um, and then stamping it, which would also work for typing, and then baiting, and then fishing. And I gotta add one more, which is if you specify what you're fishing, the A will fall off of this. So it's pretty fun. And I, I can't remember what exactly she said, like how she said it at first. I'll have to ask her next time I see her. But she said if something was so long ago, she would say, and this might be wrong at the beginning, but she said, It's in It appears to me like a dream. Johan. <laughs> I like those kind of um, uh, drills where you substitute the different tenses or the different pronouns. It makes yeah. it, yeah, I really like that. I think Wednesday we'll go back into something a little more predictable, like just like fill in this, like change this pronoun, change this pronoun. Are we having another super class on Wednesday? It won't be Wednesday because I'll be out of town. Oh, okay. We're going to push it back probably two weeks. But I'll let you okay. folks know on Wednesday. So I will be calling in from Princeton. But, uh, Whoa. Go hang out. You, the you'll probably be talking different. Yeah, I'll, I'll be talking with my, I'll put my Jersey accent on. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, cheese. Good night, cheese. Good night, cheese. Good night, cheese. Uh,